it's the budget of the Carrion, and uh, it's been a little while, so uh, just wanted to point out that this is not just my delightful cooking. This is, in fact, a baby. Um, so he'll be coming midsummer, so that's fun. That's what I've been up to recently. Um, hopefully, all's well with you guys. Um, so today, I am going to show you how to make two different types of loaves of bread. Um, I'm going to do a cranberry orange quick bread. It's kind of like a banana bread, but with a cranberry orange flavors, obviously. And uh, another um, type, which is a cinnamon raisin yeast bread. Um, and yeast breads, uh, a lot of people don't like them very much because they think that they're so hard and they take a lot of time. And the truth is they do take a lot of time, um, but almost none of that time is yours. It's mostly just rise time, which is you letting the yeast do its job um, and ferment the sugars to create carbon dioxide bubbles that gives uh, yeast stoves that lovely lightness. Um, so it does take a couple of hours, but you can just ignore it and, you know, go watch Netflix <laughs> while it's rising. Um, so we're going to make two different types of bread, and then we're going to combine them for a fun surprise. So keep watching. So um, the first step is I'm going to turn my oven on to 350, because that needs a little bit of time to warm up. Um, and just make sure there's nothing I forgot in there, uh, if there's not. Um, so we've got our handy handy stand mixture. Um, if you don't have a stand mixer, that's totally fine. All you really need is a good strong forearm and a spoon and a nice big bowl, um, but I have it, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to add in my uh, wet ingredients first. So I've got one egg and my orange juice. Um, need about half cup of that. <clears throat> you can use any type of orange juice um, and you know honestly probably cranberry juice would work too uh, if you really want that cranberry flavor. I know cranberry orange is kind of like a holiday um, flavor profile but I think it's great any time of the year personally. So we got a half cup of that and my one egg Try not to drop any shell in there. Okay. And a trusty towel, never bake without it. Alright. Then I'm gonna add some baking soda and some baking powder. Uh, a little bit less of the soda than the powder, about a half teaspoon of the baking soda. And both of these things help uh, the bread to rise a little bit more because there's no yeast in here. Remember I said the yeast bread rises um, because of the yeast and time. Um, and so because we're not doing either one of those things, uh, we're just sticking it straight into the oven and we're not using yeast. We need these types of bread need a little bit more help. So half teaspoon of the soda, teaspoon and a half of the powder. super super easy. You can make this, you know, for the holidays to have a nice impressive dessert or brunch any time of the year really. Um, and that's all you need right there. Yeah. Oh, can't forget the Crisco. There you go. So I'm going to turn this back on, add my flour in slowly. sure that everything is nice and combined um, because this is a quick bread not a yeast bread you don't really care about um, mixing it for a long time you're not trying to build that gluten 
uh, that makes bread so tasty. You just want everything mixed together and all the shortening or fat to make sure that that's dissolved into the dough. So you'll notice this is a very wet, sticky, thick kind of dough. That's what you want. So. but not least, we're going to fold in just a couple ounces of raisins. And because the bread is so moist, those will, uh, those craisins will kind of fluff up a little bit. So, oh, it's like a pretty picture. Beautiful. Look at that. So easy, guys. Come on. You can totally do this. Um, so I am going to just fold them in by hand rather than using the stand mixer because I don't want them to become smashed to smithereens. And to give you a little hint about the big finale, I'm going to add a secret ingredient. Streaky, eh, so what? All right. It's a little bit of red mixed into a lot of bit of dough, so it might come out kind of pink, but that will still work for our purposes here. So that's fine with me. Make sure you get down underneath it and fold it over because you see there'll be spots of dough that are still not colored and streaks of coloring still in there. So you gotta get all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you're mixing it in. Leave no dough unturned. Oh, okay, look at that. That is beautiful. Mm, smells fantastic, like oranges. We're gonna get our smaller loaf pan here. Spray that down with some cooking spray. Oh yeah. Don't want any sticking. All right, and here we go. Into the pan. but there's a raw egg in it, so, you know, can't be too careful and whatnot. But feel free to with the spoon at home. I won't judge. I won't tell anybody. Don't worry. All right. So, this is going to go straight into the oven about 50 to 60 minutes. Um, so it does take a while to bake, but again, just go watch a movie. doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure you set a timer. You don't want to realize you forgot about your bread by the smell of burning, right? So I'm just going to pop this in the oven, um, wipe down our bowl because we're going to use the same stand mixer for the yeast bread, and then I'll see you right back here in a minute. All right, welcome back to step two where we're going to make some cinnamon raisin bread. Um, so I washed out the bowl, um, but left the beaters because we're using basically all the same ingredients. 
Um, we've got sugar, flour, yeast this time, cinnamon and raisin, of course. You can't make cinnamon and raisin bread without those. Um, this time we're adding in some oats and uh, almond milk instead of orange juice for the liquid um, and some shortening, of course, because you need a little bit of fat. So step one with the yeast bread is the yeast. I know, it's shocking. Um, I'm going to use two nice heaping tablespoons because I want to make sure that my bread rises really nicely. Um, and this yeast, I buy it by the pound, so it's a little old, who knows. Um, I want to make sure that it's going to work. So you add your yeast, you add a little bit of sugar, and then you're going to need some warm water. A little bit warmer than lukewarm. dried and dehydrated so it's inactive but still alive fish um, by adding the warm water you kind of wake it up and uh, it's like oh hey it's time for me to do my job and make bread rise so um, that is just proofing the yeast um, then we're gonna leave that sit for about five to ten minutes and we'll come back uh, and add all the rest of the ingredients Okay, so you know that your yeast is proofed uh, or ready to start um, doing its job when it's nice and foamy. I don't know if you can see the bubbles there, but um, that means that the yeast is waking up and it is fermenting the sugar and creating carbon dioxide bubbles, which is what we want. Um, so I'm going to start adding in my wet ingredients, which for this uh, is going to be two tablespoons of this shortening. Uh, again, you can use butter or coconut oil or olive oil, whatever your preferred fat is. Go one. Uh, I like the shortening at this time of year because it's just to the point of being nice and soft at room temperature. There we go, two tablespoons of that. Uh, about three quarters of a cup of milk. And I'm using almond milk, as you can see. Uh, you can use really any type of milk. It's not like cow's milk has something specific in it to make this work. Um, so you can use almond, soy, cow, goat, I don't care. Uh, but about three quarters of a cup. swirls and it is this hole in the middle so you got what I call the to do stage um, so all of our stuff is all mixed together and we're gonna leave it for the first rise um, so this is a two rise bread um, so you mix everything together the first time you leave it alone for one to two hours okay cover it with a nice towel um, you can use plastic wrap or an upside down plate whatever just to you know keep the warm air in and keep bugs and dust out um, for that hour while it sits and let the yeast do their job. So they're in there working away at the sugars to ferment them, break them down, create carbon dioxide bubbles. Those nice little bubbles is what makes our bread rise and makes it fluffy and uh, delicious. So that's the first rise. Um, we'll give it one to two hours and come back. It should approximately double in size. If it doesn't, that's okay. Um, you can either let it go a little longer or just forge ahead. It's not going to hurt it. Um, but definitely give it at least one hour. 
Um, so we'll see where we're at then. Okay, so it has been uh, 50 minutes and our first quick bread is done. The cranberry orange bread. Look at that. Oh, I know you can't smell it, but holy cow, the whole smell, house smells so good. It's a lovely golden brown color. Looks like it's baked all the way through, which is great. Um, one other way to test is you can knock on it. You can kind of hear it. Uh, sounds hollow. So that is our first step. That bread is done. If you want to just stop here and enjoy the uh, cranberry orange bread, go for it. Um, I'm going to let that cool a little bit. Um, and we still have a while to go waiting for our rise on our second yeast bread. Um, so the cinnamon raisin bread's coming along. I'm gonna let that go about another half hour to an hour, um, and then we'll punch that down and do the second rise, and I'll show you the super secret special part. See you then. Okay, so now we have let our yeast dough rise um, for about an hour and a half, and you can see it's getting nice and puffy now. Um, so if you want to just make the yeast dough, all you do is punch it down um, in the bowl, roll it on the counter, put some flour on your counter, flour on your hands, and then just massage the dough for like five minutes. Add flour if you have to, if it's too sticky, um, and then put it in your bread pan and let it rise again for about an hour. Um, and then you bake it, that's all there is to it, and then you have cinnamon raisin bread. But we're gonna attempt something extra special. So I have the um, bread that I made before. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. <laughs> That's always a good idea when you're working with food and about to touch it a lot. Um, so I've got my orange craisin bread that I dyed on the inside. And what I'm going to try to do is carve the bread into a heart shape. Then I'm going to put that inside of the other loaf and bake it. So when you slice it, you'll get a little surprise inside. So we'll see how that goes. Let's find out. Um, probably, it also needs to fit inside of the loaf inside of this pan. So I wanna make sure you're not making it too big such that the rest of the dough won't fit. So I guess the good news is this probably means I'm gonna do half of the loaf for the carving part, which means if I mess up, I might have a second chance. So let's see what this baby looks like on the inside. Oh, not bad. So it's not as pink as I would have liked. You can see it's way more pink at the top. Um, so if I were to do this again, I would probably add a lot more um, food color, but that's fine. Um, so from here, let's see, I'm going to want the little pointy end like a heart. So I'm going to cut the corners off. And don't worry, I'll still eat these pieces of the bread. Probably just with some butter and a spoon out of a bowl because waste not want not, right? We're just making the pointy bottom part of the heart right now. Okay. This uh, would probably be a little bit easier if I um, cut slices and had like a heart cutter, but I don't have one of those. So just doing what we can with what we've got, okay? And flatten out the top a little. Ooh, this is gonna. And just try to carve out like a little divot. You know, like the little top pointing down part of the heart. The top crust is, as you can see, very uh, crusty, which is great. 
I'm gonna try to gently carve a little V into the top. Pull that out. Okay. We don't want to get too crazy. All right. Not the prettiest heart I've ever seen in my life, but hey, blood red's really good too. Orangey. Mm. Okay. Well, there you go. It's not perfect, but that will do. Alright. Step one. Step two. Uh, I'm going to spray this first because my hands are about to be covered in flour. So, I want this to be ready as soon as I am. I'll put the bread in there. Spray it real good because we don't want to get stuck. I suppose you could use the same loaf pan if you wanted to, um, but I happen to have two that are different sizes. This one's slightly smaller, so I just want to make sure we have enough room. Um, so we're going to throw down some flour. And 
next hard part is going to be trying to get this dough arranged such that it is wrapped around the pre-baked heart dough. So let's see how that goes, right? So thinking maybe try to kind of make it a longish dough. Let's see. So I can maybe roll it around it. I want it really flat in the middle, so that's where the pointy part of the heart's going to be. And then the rest will just wrap up the side. Okay, so we're just smushing it down. You really can't go wrong. And like I said, if you don't want to be all fancy and stuff, like this is your dough, you just roll it, pop it in the thing, leave it rise. So we're going to go like this, Oop, right on in there. Take our heart, cute little heart, and just pop it right down in the middle. Wrap it up. Like a nice little blankie. Kind of try to pinch it all around just to make it look, you know, like it's all one big chunk of dough, not, not hiding something. Here we go. Just pinching it down. Okie doke. And uh, that's that. So hold my breath. We'll let this guy rise again about an hour. And then we're going to bake it. Um, 350 for 40 to 45 minutes. And um, keep my fingers crossed. So. Okay, so now we have let our bread with our surprise inside rise for about an hour and look at how puffy and over the top it is. That's how you know the yeast is alive and well, doing its job in there, making all the nice bubbles um, to make it poofy. So I've got my oven set to 350 again. I'm just going to pop it right in there. Um, you could wait till it's totally preheated. Oh, Billy. So there you go. And we're going to bake this guy for about 40 minutes. I'll give it an extra two minutes since it's still preheating. So 42 minutes. And then hopefully it'll be nice and cooked and brown on top. And we can take it out, uh, let it cool, and then slice it open and hope for the big reveal. So see you in a little bit. All right, so we let our lovely bread bake for 40 minutes and it came out perfect and it's definitely fully cooked. Sounds kind of hollow. Look at that beautiful loaf of bread. So now we'll see if we actually have a heart inside. Oh man, the worst case, keep in mind, even if it didn't work, it's still going to be delicious. Oh, there you go. See, it's kind of sideways, but I can totally see the heart shape right there. Like I said, um, maybe a lot more food coloring <laughs> next time. Uh, looks like only the top half really got it, and it's mostly just pink. Um, the bottom just kind of stayed bread colored. Um, but since they're two different breads, uh, you really can see the difference, the whole outline in there. So that's pretty cool. So uh, that should run throughout the whole loaf and you just slice it with your bread knife. They're serrated like this so that you um, use a sawing motion and it actually cuts through the bread. If you've ever tried to cut fresh bread with a flat knife, usually it doesn't go very great. So. Um, there you go, a cinnamon raisin bread with a orange craisin heart inside. So um, yes, it does take a lot of time, but no, it does not take a lot of effort. And I think that if you give it a try, you'll find that it's very worth it.